You might think the MacBook Air is very thin. You might also think Sony's earlier Z505 laptop is very thin. But that is nothing compared to the Sony VAIO X505 released in 2004. This is a truly insanely thin laptop. And thanks to Douglas here in Adelaide for lending me this. I can't wait to open it up, so let's take a closer look. For a box that's around 22 years old, it's held up remarkably well. Even though this is an extremely thin laptop, it's running an Intel CPU of a very low wattage. Sony really went all out with this sleek, premium feeling box. But that's enough about the box, let's take a look at the X505P that's contained within. You might think this is a rather large box for such a small laptop. Well, laptops used to come with accessories. They rarely do these days though. But to be fair, Sony definitely had to find a way to justify the very steep price for this particular device. This includes a very nice carry bag, which reveals just how small and slim the X505 is. That super thin design does make the frame flex quite a bit though. Amazingly, there is still a decent selection of ports, with the large Sony charging plug integrated into the hinge itself. The other side has a headphone jack and PC card slot. Clearly, someone took very good care of this laptop throughout its life. But what else came in the box of this high-end laptop? Since this is a Sony VAIO, there are going to be a ton of booklets and documentation. Sadly, these are all in Japanese, a language I cannot read, but it's still super cool to see this stuff regardless. Douglas had included a CF card adapter, giving us a reason to open up the laptop and replace the hard disk later in the video. Assuming I can navigate the foreign language, I should be able to do a fresh install of Windows XP onto that CF card. Along with the instruction booklets are several advertisements from 2003. Once again, I really wish I could read Japanese, as I really have no idea what any of this says. One last downside to the region specific nature of the VAIO is the Japanese power plug. But thankfully I have a heap of these figure eight style laptop power cords lying around. The last laptop I bought brand new didn't even come with a single instruction booklet. But wait, there's more. With a similar design to the laptop bag is a small pouch with some more peripherals, a dongle as well as a rather oddly shaped mouse. And while the X505 has a reasonable selection of ports, it is far too thin for VGA and Ethernet. So the dongle has to be used for those. The mouse actually has a rather odd feature, a memory stick slot, which as I found out is a different size compared to the memory stick Pro Duo card I had lying around. I have never seen another mouse that includes a card reader before, but what's it like actually using one of these VIOs here in 2025? Running one of the lowest wattage single core processors of 2003, and of course, Windows XP. With the power adapter connected, let's begin. Ah yes, the also nostalgic Windows XP boot screen. You love to see it. And about 40 seconds later, it was all ready to go. I have no idea what any of this says, and my god it's been many years since I've seen Norton Antivirus. This model actually came standard with an impressive 512 megabytes of RAM and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. I don't particularly like the current background, but there are a few other Sony VIA ones to choose from thankfully. That is much better. And just like most Sony computers of the time, there are a lot of pre-installed applications. Being so impossibly thin, some sacrifices had to be made to the battery life. But if you need a battery that can power pretty much any household device, definitely check out EcoFlow's Delta Pro 3. With a huge 4 kilowatt hour capacity paired with an impressive 4000 watt AC inverter output, you can power practically any household appliance. Another excellent feature is EcoFlow's app, which allows you to control so many aspects of the power station easily. Setting charge and discharge limits, or even limit the rate of charge to help extend the life of the power station. The options are pretty vast, and the import options are also quite extensive, with the ability to charge the Delta Pro 3 at up to 2600 watts. EcoFlow are also giving away a River 3 UPS power station. To enter the competition, all you've got to do is leave a comment below with the hashtag EcoFlow Australia. The Delta Pro 3 also has under 10 millisecond UPS switchover time. So if you're after a real all-in-one power station for reliable home power backup, off-the-grid living, or a way to store solar energy, the quiet and powerful Delta Pro 3 could be right for you. To find out more, click the links in the description below. EcoFlow have up to 45% off right now thanks to their end of financial year sales, so definitely go check them out. You can also find EcoFlow and their power stations offline at leading retailers 
here in Australia. This particular model was released exclusively in Japan in 2003, and near the end of that year was being exported internationally for around $34.99 US dollars through various online companies, Dynamism.com being one of them. They exported a wide variety of Japanese exclusive tech, and adjusted for inflation, this would have cost just shy of $6,000 in 2025 money. It really was an exciting time to be someone with lots of money to spend on interesting and wacky laptop designs. And a wacky design this is, the keyboard towards the bottom of the laptop with a small track point for controlling the mouse. Compared against the original MacBook Air, which had the selling point of being super thin, the Vio is indeed thinner and lighter. The earlier Sony Vio Z505 looks rather thick by comparison. However, that thin design did have some drawbacks. Wi-Fi wasn't built in, and by late 2003, it was fairly common for this feature to be integrated into most laptops themselves. If an optical drive is important to you, you will not find one in the X505 for obvious reasons, but this external CD-ROM drive is actually thicker than the laptop itself. And if you wanted a Sony-branded external DVD rewritable drive at the time, it would have cost you around 600 US dollars. Thankfully, you don't have to pay that much these days, since optical media is pretty much dead. The PC card slot external CD-ROM drive doesn't appear to work without further configuration, but that is made a little bit harder due to the language barrier. How about some other external peripherals, such as the mouse? If you're right-handed, you'll find that this cable length is somewhat short. It's not a horrible mouse to use, and in fact I'd say it's very usable, while on the smaller side. I honestly prefer using the little mouse instead of the pointer nub, which is a little bit awkward to use due to its placement. And the keyboard being so far down takes a lot of getting used to, even worse if you use it on a lap instead of a desk. I gave it a shot and I really wasn't a fan. To complete our setup, I'll try using a random USB DVD drive I had lying around. Thankfully, it works straight away, and I guess I left my Star Wars Battlefront disc in there. And I was also able to connect to a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network, but further configuration to get this online would be needed. I tried updating to XP Service Pack 3, but it is language specific. And sadly, the standalone Japanese update version is no longer available on Microsoft's website or even archive.org, so I simply downloaded the retail version in Japanese. That meant to complete the Service Pack 3 update, I'll have to burn the ISO to CD. Thankfully, I do still have some blank optical media stored away. It's, it's been a long time since I've used these, and I really never thought I would be burning a CD in 2025. I'll be honest, I did forget how to do this. It's really as simple as right-clicking on the ISO in macOS and then clicking Burn to Disk. Now we have Japanese Windows XP on a bootable CD-ROM. Now I can go ahead and update Windows XP. I want to preserve all the Sony Vio software on here, so I'm not going to do a complete fresh install. And to help navigate the language barrier, I tried using this thing called Google Lens, which kind of helped. And after some time, now we have Windows XP Service Pack 3. It's time to go through and install some games and applications. This model only came with a 20 gigabyte hard drive, so space is somewhat limited. Ah yes, who doesn't love that Windows XP startup jingle? While the very low wattage 1 GHz Intel processor has weak, integrated graphics, it can run much older 3D games pretty well. LEGO Island 2 is very much playable. Quake 3 Arena is another game that runs well on here. I must admit that the little Sony mouse does make aiming a challenge though. And this is the first time I've ever used 3D Mark 2001 Benchmark. Once again, the little Sony Vio laptop holds up reasonably well. I did however find that a lot of new applications, even after installing Service Pack 3, struggled to run sadly. No Star Wars Battlefront for me it seems. But our good old friend Space Cadet Pimble on the other hand has never let us down. It always brings back good memories of using the school computers around 20 years ago. So it's time to see just what's inside this super thin device and swap out the old hard drive. To maintain the relative thinness, the battery is only 3 cells, with a 2000 mAh capacity, and it looks as if one of the tri-wing screws is already damaged, which isn't good. And to get inside, there are many different screws to remove. The undamaged ones came out easily without much effort. The stripped one, 
even with the correct bit and the right amount of downward pressure, did not turn. Whoever tried to open this previously mustn't have been successful. The problem is, the laptop is so flimsy that you can't press down very hard without the risk of breaking the casing. I tried using a rubber band, a tiny speck of super glue on the screwdriver tip, but nothing would make it turn. This isn't my laptop, and given how rare it is, I did not want to cause any damage. I really wanted to see how this laptop was put together, but the fact that it is so slim and flexible means that drilling out the strip screw could cause further damage. Either way, it's been very cool to take a look at this rare Sony laptop that I had no idea even existed. Should you buy one today here in 2025? As a collectible oddity? Sure. But as something to actually use, I would say it's much better left in the past. I think it is a real shame that Sony didn't really sell these laptops outside of Japan very much. Although, to be fair, given the price, I don't think they would have sold all that well. But either way, this was a great look back at something that you don't really see much anymore. A laptop that actually includes accessories. Yes, it included a laptop bag as well. Big thanks to Douglas for lending me this. I don't know how I would have ever come across one myself. He actually had to import it from Japan himself. Either way, I've really had a good time looking at it and I hope you have as well. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.